Alright, here is a small fun fact about the UDS-03 before we start. Now if you look in the Swedish tech tree, the UDS-03 is placed at a tier before the famous S-Tanks, so this might lead you to believe that this vehicle is like a predecessor or prototype to the Swedish STRV-103s, but in reality, this tank destroyer was designed after the release and after the mass production of the STRV-103s, so it was designed as a replacement, but it was placed before the actual tanks themselves, so kind of a juxtapositioning of the time period in a sense. This vehicle is younger than these vehicles, so time period incoherence. But for today, we'll talk about the turreted version of the UDS-03 called alternate number 3 version. So there were multiple versions of the tier 8 tank destroyers, but some of them have a superstructure similar to a Yak Panzer IV or Kananan Yak Panzer. This one has a turret, obviously, so a little bit better at target adjusting or targeting, but these were obviously more expensive to produce. So for the time, the Swedish just bought like Centurions and got things over with. So yeah, no point of spending money to produce tanks that they don't use. But let's take a look at this vehicle. So looks like a <laughs> STRV with a turret strap on. So pretty much that's exactly what it is. But unlike the tier 9 and tier 10 Swedish medium tanks, this turret doesn't have armor, so it does have an RPG in the back. Holy crap, that's a that's an RPG. <laughs> All right, but eh, it also has snorkels. That should be snorkels, or very big binoculars. That's snorkels. It should be snorkels. I don't know, but yeah, it's a UDS-03 with a large ass turret on it, calling it a medium tank. So. I mean, it's not a bad looking tank. It fits all the Swedish medium tanks, I guess. Uh, it's like the UDS-14 for the Swedish medium tank line. So without turret armor, in a sense. Whereas you get turret armor, well, turret sloping for the tier 9 and tier 10. Even though these only have like 70 millimeters and something like that. But the sloping dramatically helps. So for this vehicle... It has no sloping and no armor, so let's take a look at the stats, but not a premium, not a special with large repair kit thingy, so not a battle pass tank, but eh, who knows, it could be like a STRVK as well, becoming a premium, also it could become like a battle pass tank, so for now, it's collecting dust, alright, 105mm, it's a regular shotgun, you do have the hydropneumatic suspension going up and down, similar to the Swedish medium tanks. All the Swedish medium tanks have it, other than the lower tiers. The crew fits as well, similar to the tank destroyers, similar to the... Wait, it doesn't have the loader. Does it? Wait, all of them have three crew members. What the hell am I talking about? All Swedish medium tanks have three. Oh, all Swedish tanks have three crews. Other than the lower tiers. Yep. Also, all of them just need three female crew for you to get by. Yep, all of them have it. <laughs> so, yeah, not bad. I mean, you don't have to train that... Well, then again, you have to train that many skills. So, some of the important skills are missed. Oh, well. But, eh, fits. Alright, firepower. 105. Penetration, 252. Not bad, average-ish, but alpha, below average, only 360. Uh, kind of low, and DPM is alright, so 2,373. Eh, it's a sniping medium tank, so it gets less DPM with more penetration, but I think this is the actual worst sniping medium tank DPM out of tier 9s. Leopard prototype has more, Centurion... A 7-1 has more, I think, but that's classified as a versatile, not a sniper. 
Um, accuracy wise, 0 0.34. Eh, okay, good, but not great. So could be like 0 0.33 or 32, but eh, fast aim time. 1.8, not bad. Obviously, the gun depression with the hydro pneumatic suspension, 13 degrees and 20 elevation, fast traverse or medium tank traverse. Takes a while to reload, like 8.5, 8.3 with the rammer, so it takes a while for 360 alpha. So obviously, the downside is DPM and alpha. Accuracy, eh, good enough or decent enough, but Fires APCR round, shell velocity high, so that's a plus. But gold shell is mm, not great. In my honest opinion, only 284 millimeters of pin for the gold shell is uh, below average. You need about 310 or so. So, in my opinion, it's a fast gold shell with 1,560 meters per second shell velocity but this pin could be a lot better so let's compare this with the leopard prototype but the leopard prototype is like one of the best snipers of a medium tank so yeah well obviously the normal shell for the leopard prototype is already better <laughs> by 26 millimeters holy crap and if we just go to the Leopard Prototype, we can see the Leopard Prototype's gold shell is like 300. High explosive anti-tank, but uh, lower shell velocity, I think. Or no, never mind. Still APCR, it's still fast. <laughs> 315, or 323. Oh yeah, so your gold shell, by all means, is not as great. <laughs> In comparison. Alright, go back home. Uh, well, this, this alpha is disturbing, as well as the penetration, so, uh, dispersion, eh, the same as uh, the Leopard Prototype, so, decent enough, so we can quickly compare with Leopard Proto again, but, as you already saw, the gold shell doesn't compare in terms of pen, the actual shell doesn't compare in, in pen, also the alpha doesn't compare, because it's... 60 less than the 420 blaze it but you have less accuracy so yeah and why doesn't this show up funny enough well you have less top speed about the same horsepower per time ratio so eh, i don't feel i do not feel this vehicle is as good as a leopard prototype in terms of damage and sniping potential but it's still workable, right? It's still decent enough. Just not as good <laughs> as a Leopard Prototype, funny enough. So don't compare with the sniping aspect of Germans, even though <laughs> that's the only thing they got. But armor-wise, 1,600 health, below average, well, average-ish, slightly below average, but 35 at the front <laughs> of the hull. 35 at the sides, 66 at the turret front, and 30 at the turret sides, so 35 is not gonna stop. I mean, I mean, unless you're using like a 90 caliber gun, <laughs> yeah, you can bounce a 90 millimeter, sure, <laughs> but <laughs> otherwise everybody has 100 millimeter or more. Actually, they can bounce a 100 millimeter too. It's 35, not 30. Oh, well, if they have a 105, yeah, well, your armor is good against light tanks. Well, some of the light tanks, quote unquote. <laughs> Otherwise, you get pinned. Also, artillery hits this thing, you get pinned with full damage. Wonderful. <laughs> Turret front, no sloping. Well, no okay K-ish sloping, but mantlet is 40, armor is 50. There are parts that are 60 somewhere, I don't know where. Well... Somewhere are 66, but I have no idea, but mostly it's just 70, 40-ish, you'll get pinned. <laughs> no question. This thing doesn't have armor, so it's not like the UDS 15 slash 16 or just 16 itself. So it's more like the tier A version, the UDS 14, alternate number 5, but sometimes you can bounce a shot, a low caliber shot. All right. 
Repair tracks time, standard, so nothing to talk about there, but overall, no armor. <laughs> Don't get spotted, but meh, it has decent enough horsepower per ton ratio at 20. Top speed could be better, only 50 kilometers per hour. The Leopard prototype has 65, has better pin, better alpha, slightly more DPM too. 20 for reverse, not bad. Hull traverse, fast, but let's take a look at terrain resistance. So it's the same as a Leopard prototype. All right, that's good to know. Compare this with Charge Future 4. Well, yeah, it's slightly worse than a Char Future 4. But, <laughs> well, funny enough, they classify snipers like this one as a sniper. The 430 version number 2 is not really a sniper, though. Eh, I mean, yeesh. Well, they also classified the Type 61 as a sniper for some reason. It's the same terrain resistance as a Type 61. Alright. Well, better top speed. Well, it's APCR compared to AP, so shell velocity is a plus there, but... Uh, <laughs> you might as well play with a <laughs> Leopard prototype. But, mm, let's compare this with just UDS-16. Same terrain uh, resistance as a UDS-16, but less... This, well, more dispersion factors for tank traverse. You do have better pin, but that comes at the cost of turret armor. S or turret sloping, not turret armor, but the sloping is a lot better on the UDS-16. Uh, so, relatively speaking, it's still pretty mobile, just not as fast as you would like. But the caveat is... It has one of the best camo for medium tanks, so it's pretty stealthy. That might be the same as a K91, so well, I have to be sure. Just a quick comparison for my notes, but K91... Where the hell is a K91? There it is. Camouflage... Where the hell is the camouflage value? There. Wow, it's close. It's close to a K91's camo, which is about the same as a Bat Chat's ammo. So, Bat Chat. It's actually better than Bat Chat, funny enough. So, this thing has better camo than Bat Chat's. Not as good as a K91, but. Nah, eh, that's not bad. I mean, that's a big caveat that you need to have. Otherwise, you have no armor, so you get spotted. <laughs> If you do get spotted, you get pinned, but it's hard to spot you. So that's a big caveat. That's a big plus. All right. Well, you do need it. View range, below average, 380 for a tier 9. That kind of sucks. Radio, standard. Nobody cares if it's above uh, 700. But here is a comparison with other tier 9 sniping medium tanks. And you can see that. Penetration is middle of the line. Alpha is below average, other than compared with the object 430, version number 2. Similar to a Type, 60, a type 61, but Type 61 have a lot of DPM. <laughs> this thing has actually the worst DPM out of all the sniping medium tanks. Classified as sniping medium tanks, so... Ugh. I mean, doesn't have the Leopard prototype's accuracy or... Penetration or alpha mobility wise, um, 20 horsepower per ton ratio is better than the object 430. But 430 version number two has better terrain resistance than all of them, so it's still the same across the board about 20 or so. So you're not standing out with 20 horsepower per ton ratio, but you're kind of falling back with only 50 kilometers per hour top speed. So the big caveat, obviously, is. The camouflage. It's better camo than the Coons Panzer. Wow, that's good. But obviously it's better than the gigantic <laughs> tumor on the Type 61. It has no camo. But view range, some of the worst. So there are a few big trade-offs. It still feels like a tank destroyer because of the lack of view range and better camo. But Alpha could be better. DPM could be better. 
Penetration could be better. Armor could be better, but it's still a... Or top speed also could be better, but it's still a tank destroyer by all means. This is not a brawling medium tank. You have no armor. You do have the mobility, but you'll get pinned anyways. And you also get pinned by high explosives. So, how would I rate this thing? DPM is alright when you think about it, but it just so dramatically falls behind when you play the Leopard Prototype. I get spoiled. I get spoiled playing sniping medium tanks because I love my Leopard 1. So, uh, where the hell is my Leopard 1? So I get spoiled playing this. This thing carried me in ranked. So, fast gun, high pen, high alpha, gold shell also works. Also, the gold shell on the UDSO3, just, you know, 280 millimeters of pen is not going to cut it. Like, really, doesn't going to cut it. Um, shit. <laughs> How much would I rate this thing? Yeah, 284 millimeters of pen. That's not going to cut for the gold shell. Really terrible for a sniping gun as well. So, otherwise, you have to flank around. But, it's like a 4? <laughs> Well, whoa, 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 that might be a little bit too low. It's like a five? It's... I mean, all the stats are good-ish, but you have no armor. And the competition is just about the same, right? So you're middle of the line, not special. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you have a good concealment. That's all you have. You have about the same average mobility, same average gun performance. Might be slightly below average because of the gun penetration and DPM and aim time, but you have the camo, I guess. So that's the only good thing about, <laughs> only real good thing about it. Uh, I'll be generous. I'll give it a five. I was thinking about four point five, so four point seven five. There you go. <laughs> Middle of the line. It's okay as a sniper, but when you're comparing this with other sniping medium tanks at tier 9, just average other than the camo, right? So even if you do get spotted, you get shot at, and you have no armor to defend yourself. You're not as fast as a bat chat, obviously, so you cannot run away as fast, but you do have the horsepower. Well, horsepower per turn ratio is always 20. Even for tanks or medium tanks that have armor, they have like 20 horsepower per turn ratio, so you're not running away that quickly. Uh, 4.5 out of 10. Well, there you go, folks. Pretty average, other than the camo. The camo's good. The shell performance kind of suck. <laughs> Mobility kind of sucks. View range kind of sucks. Well, obviously. But 4.75 out of 10. There we go. But thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.